Is it gathering like this a, 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 a ways in which we can gain, gain the forgiveness of Allah? One. وأنه سبب لدخول الجنة. Are a means through which we can enter into heaven? Two. وأنه سبب لاستجابة الدعاء من الله عز وجل. And it's a reason for a, 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 a way to our, our dua to be our prayers to be answered by Allah عز وجل. وأنه سبب للسعادة هم اليوم لا يقابلهم جلسوا. And it's a means through which we can, uh, uh, we can uh, be saved. Because he said, he mentioned that uh, through this gathering, they are the people who, uh, people who sit with them can never uh, fear uh, 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 or, or despair. And the hadith written by Imam Hakim, gathering, if a person comes to a gathering like this, then his, his bad deeds can be transformed into good deeds. وفي حديث آخر أن الملائكة تتنزل على أولئك الأضواء. Another hadith is mentioned the angels come down to gatherings like this. وأن الرحمة ترجع. And the mercy surrounds them. وأن السكينة تنزل عليهم. And tranquility, سكينة comes upon them and mixes in with them. إن الله عز وجل يواهي بهم في الملائكة الأعلى. And Allah سبحانه وتعالى boasts in His high kingdom about this gathering. وأنهم يعتبرون في روضة من رياض الجنة. And we are in a high, one of the highest levels of the gardens of paradise. إلى غير ذلك من الفوائد العظيمة. الحمد لله. And many many other great benefits. قال صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا مررت من رياض الجنة فارتعوا. And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, when you go by the gardens of رياض الجنة and فارتعوا. إلى وما رياض الجنة يا رسول الله. And it was mentioned, what are the gardens of paradise, O Messenger of Allah? قال حيلة الذكر وفي رواية قال مجال السعيد. And it was mentioned in one narration, the circles of remembrance, remembering Allah, and in one narration, the circles of the knowledge of Allah. كان السلف الصالح يقولون مجال السعيد كيف تتوضع كيف تصلي كيف تحج كيف تبيع كيف تشتري كيف تنكح. أن تتعلم ذلك. And what he meant that in terms of circles of knowledge are the circles of that, that tell you how, how to do your wudu correctly, how to pray correctly, how to do the hajj correctly, how to do business correctly, and how to get married correctly. The question from Mahmoud is: It was uh, if you're at home and the time of the prayer has come, do you say the adhan or not, or do you just pray straight away? The answer is that from uh, from the wujub, obligatory, from having to do it. There's no, you don't have to do the adhan, you don't have to do the iqama. لكن الإقامة فيها فضيلة بالتفاق. And however, the iqama has a has a merit according to the علماء. لكن هل تؤذن قبل الإقامة في البيت أو تكتفي بأذان المساجد؟ But the the issue here is that do you is it enough for you to do the iqama at home and the adhan at the mosque is enough? في خلاف بين العلماء. لا لا يكفي هذا الصلاة. في خلاف بين العلماء والأصح أن الأفضل أن تؤذن ثم تقول. العلماء say that the best thing is to do the adhan and then do the iqama if you're at home. أما أذان الساعة هذا لا يغني. He said, however, the alarm clock that does the adhan does not enough. لأننا لو كسرنا الساعة لن نجد أحد الوصف. Because if we smashed up and took the clock apart, there's nobody, there's no more Adin inside. So it's a matter of tasqeel and sadaq. The ulama, even if the answer was given to the clock, 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 the he says some people what they will do they will record the adhan of the Haram al-Makki and then they play it at the house thinking that that's enough for the adhan. 
Jetzt ein Hallo alle macht, das ist noch nicht. Not coming to gatherings of knowledge or gatherings of the remembrance of Allah, classes and so forth, or lectures, uh, will eventually kill your heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, remind, have remembrance, because remembering benefits the believers. And the great pious predecessors uh, have, have said that the benefit of attending uh, gatherings is it not that the plant, if it stopped from water for three days, that it will die, grow old and die after three days? The, 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 the Salaf said that if a person uh, can, the same thing, if his heart uh, 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 does not have any, any wisdom going to it for more than three days, then he will die like the plant. And if a person comes to gatherings like this and his heart then becomes more alive. And uh, the ma'rifah, the understanding of Allah then becomes better. And the person becomes more knowledgeable. And through, and through knowledge, a person then will have more fear of Allah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says those people who fear Allah the most are the ulama. <laughs> and fear of Allah is the magnet that attracts the goodness in this world and the next world. And uh, the last uh, uh, the verse of Surah Al-Dayna. And the last verse of the Quran, which in translation, uh, the world, those who believe and believe in Allah, they will get uh, heaven and in heaven, paradise, uh, gardens, flowing, flowing lakes, and great blessings, and so forth. And that all that. Reward is for who? For the one who had that fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore it's strongly encouraged that we attend gathering of classes or schools of knowledge which increase our fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we come across a person, a teacher or a scholar who we find that staying with him, we have more love of the dunya, more love of the world, or we have more jealousy and we hate more Muslims and we have bad behavior, then leave this is not a scholar. قال سيدنا علي بن أبي طالب سماه أتباع له عالما ولم يعيش في العلم يوما سالما. And said Nawawi has a line of poetry that said they call him a a scholar who has not lived correctly for one day. وليس كل من أتقن تلاوة القرآن يعتبر عالم. So therefore, not everybody who has the correct recitation of the Quran is a scholar, an alim. <laughs> and not everybody who can give a good talk is a alim, a scholar. <laughs> Very knowledge is with learning. <laughs> and fiqh is with understanding. A scholar is not a scholar until he has taken from the great men of the ulama, the scholars. <laughs> Those who have an unbroken chain of transmission going back to the Prophet from shape to shape to shape. <laughs> and they learned knowledge and they, they, they were precise in, in their studying. 
And then went over and reviewed and revised the, these issues. And then they went to teach the people. The question, uh, uh, what do you do if you feel like your Iman is low? What increases, what increases your Iman is more obedience to the Rahman, the most merciful. And doing a lot of dhikr, remembrance of Allah, specifically saying, La ilaha illallah. And there's a hadith that says that that iman is not removed, uh, 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 iman can be removed from a person, like a, a coat can be removed from a body. <laughs> so renew your faith. And in one narration it says, renew your faith by saying a lot, La ilaha illallah. And from the greatest things that will increase your Iman is to leave your law and desires. And to leave a disobedience against Allah. This will increase the Iman of a person more than other acts. May Allah bless you and I uh, with strong Iman. And may Allah make us from those who have a strong Iqan. And make us from those who follow the son of Al-Adnan. Amen. Amen. Islamic benefits and, and, and dunyawi benefits uh, to having a beard. And uh, uh, modern uh, uh, scientific research now is pointing and suggesting that people uh, who regularly shave uh, can get more sicknesses. And the greatest disease that you can have, or the greatest sickness you can have, is that the fact that you're leaving something which the Prophet loves. And the Prophet would do this. And he told the companions that let it grow. And the ulama are in difference of opinion in terms of how the beard is. وكانت صفة لحيته صلى الله عليه وسلم أن طولها كعرضها. And the description is that its length was the size of its width. وكان يأخذ منها من طولها أو عرضها صلى الله عليه وسلم. And he would take some of it from the, from the, the bottom or from the sides of it. وكان بعض أصحابه يأخذون ما زاد عن القبضة. And some of the companions would take with anything more over the, over the hand span, they would cut it off. <laughs> and the sah those sahabi he just mentioned were the ones who would take anything extra on the handbar. And some of the sahaba and the tabi'in would lessen it even more, lessen it. So in terms of its way, its length and so forth, there's a difference of opinion amongst the ulama. And the, in the method of Shafi'i, the school of Shafi'i, its, it's the length is the, the difference of opinion. And in the, the scholars of the Shafi'i school have said that the beard is that which grows uh, on, on the chin. Uh, and this is called the Aradain, not called the beard. So the beard, according to some scholars, is the hair that grows on the chin. 
وبعضهم أدخل في مسمى اللحية العالمة. And some scholars have said that the beard is the is the hair that grows on the chin and uh, on on the jawbone. Everything is the beard. فهي أمر محبوب. So at the end of the day, it's something which is beloved to Allah, to the Prophet. ولكن ليست علامة على أن هذا الإنسان كان. And it's not a sign that this person who has a beard is a complete person. فكم من رجل بلحية أقل من رجل بلا لحية. How many people with a beard are less uh, than the people without beards? لكنها محبوب من حيث هي سنة النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. Well, it's a sunnah. It's beloved because it is a sunnah of the Prophet. وإذا فعلت بقصد المتابعة لرسول الله يؤجر صاحبها عليها إن شاء الله. And if a person does it so that he so it's following the Prophet, he gets some reward. وهناك سبعة من الأنبياء يدخل من 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 الأصياء أنبياء غير يدخلون الجنة باللحى. وعامة الناس يدخلون الجنة جردا مردا بلا لحى. And he mentioned that uh, in the day of judgment there will be several uh, uh, righteous people that will enter into heaven uh, with their beards. Everybody else will be clean shaven. كل الناس قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يدخلون الجنة جردا مردا بلا ختان وبلا لحى. كل الناس في الجنة. And the Prophet says that everybody will enter into heaven uh, uncircumcised. And and shaven, clean shaven, except the sinner. من من يدخل الجنة بلحيته آدم عليه السلام. From those who enter into heaven, with with the beard on, is Adam عليه السلام. ومنهم أبو الأنبياء إبراهيم عليه السلام. And the father of the أنبياء إبراهيم عليه السلام. ومنهم هارون عليه السلام. And Harun, Harun عليه السلام. ومنهم سيدنا بكر الصديق يدخل الجنة بلحيته. ما شاء الله. And the Hadith mentions that Abu Bakr. رجل عنده الصديق الصديق اللي أوصل أنت أنت عنده على كل حال نعم إذا رسول الله يدخل بلحية نريد أن ندخل بلحية إذا يدخل بدون لحية لا نريد اللحية. At the end, the summary is that if the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is entering into heaven with a beard, we enter into heaven with a beard. And if he's not entering into heaven without a beard, we don't enter into heaven without a beard. فندخل الجنة إن شاء الله بلحية أو غير لحية المهم ندخل الجنة. So, inshallah, the main thing is that يعني when we go into heaven, if you have a beard or don't have a beard, the main thing is that we go into heaven. That's the main thing. لكن هذا من حيث التمني نحن نريد أن نكون مثل الحبيب صلى الله عليه وسلم. In terms of wanting to be like the prophet, we want to be. حبيب رسول الله وعاد وبارك له إن شاء الله. رزقنا وياكم العلم النافع والعمل الخالص المقبول. والدعاء الى الهدى والدلاله على الخير وصلى بذلك المنبي عن محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وجعلنا الله واياكم من اقرب الامه على الامه وانفع الامه للامه ونفعنا بعامه الامه عامه وبخاصه يا خاصه اللهم لما شعب المسلمين واحد صف المسلمين واجمع كلمه المسلمين على ما تحبه وترضاه برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين واهدنا بنشر الايات الحق والهدى في مشارق الارض ومغاربها واستخدمنا يا ربي في محابيك ومراضيك من الاعمال على وصف المحبوبيه الكبرى عندك برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم انا نعوذ بك من كل لذه بغير ذكرك وفرحه بغير مجالستك وشغل بغير معاملتك وسرور بغير قربك اللهم لا تغافل الناس بما نفعل برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم لا تبرز من اقوالنا ولا من افعالنا ولا من احوالنا ولا من جميع شؤوننا الا ما يسر قلب الحبيب محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وما يرسل الخير والنفع برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين يا ارحم الراحمين يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم انا نستغفرك يا الله اللهم انا نستغفرك يا الله من كل قول من كل قول قلناه لا ينفع ولا ولا يرشد الى سنه الحبيب ونستغفرك من كل فعل فعلناه لا يرشد الى سنه الحبيب ونستغفرك من كل حال كان علينا لا يرشد الى سنه الحبيب اللهم اجعلنا من النبي وفي النبي وبسنه النبي قائمين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين يا ارحم الراحمين واجعلنا من ابرك الناس للناس ومن انفع الناس للناس وانفعنا بالامه بخير في خير في خيريتها خاصه وفي اهل عمومها عامه في خير وروض وعافيه سر الفاتحه الى حضره النبي محمد